Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now as you've guessed from the title, uh, yes, we're going to be talking about Scotland again. And I haven't really talked about Scotland that much. I, I should have really talked about them way more than I should have. But if you wait, good things come, as they say. And I waited and good things have come from this today. So Scotland has shown ever more than it's ever done before that it wants to make sure it's itself is the future of the new member of the European Union. That is in no doubt that is what Scotland's been trying to do for many years, especially the SNP. They have been trying their best to make themselves such a European nation, going to such extent as changing every single law in Scotland to match the EU law after the UK has left the European Union. And many, many other stupid laws after that. And I don't know why I haven't talked about that one yet, but it just seemed to not be mentioned. <laughs> and I, I forget that myself. And... It looks like it's all fucking back in their face. It's all kicking them back in their faces again. And it actually is actually going so f bad, as in, it's pop. Well, I don't know why, but today and yesterday, the news seemed to be going at the Scottish government for whatever reason. They, they all seem to be going up against them. They'll support the referendum of Scottish independence, which is a thing that keeps getting mentioned, but they all seem to be going against the Scottish government's attack on the COVID virus and many things that's been going wrong because we know the Scottish government has absolutely devastated the country's main economy. It has destroyed it and we're going to talk about that in this video here where we've got two t articles from the Express which talks about the absolute scandalness of what's been going on here because it's fucking nuts. Because we, we know that SNP have totally ran out their way to make sure they are the complete powerhouse in Scotland. Like I said, it's North Korea. <laughs> uh, that's my own view. But let's go take a look at the article here. Because we have Ian Blackford and Nicholas Sturgeon both going at it to make sure Scotland is the most amazing country ever. Pride. Um, Ian Blackford shamed... Uh, Scotland uh, suffers severe job losses you can call you call England shambolic. Yes, that is a very two-faced argument the S&P does make, and especially Ian Blackford. I can't wait to meet this guy in real life. I, I seriously can't. Uh. Um, yeah, it's actually quite true because Scotland, funny enough, I can't mind what the numbers were. But if I can find them, they'll be on the screen just now. This was numbers from a month or two ago. And I talked about this in my la one of the last videos I talked about a while ago. was about Scotland and how everything was going downhill. I mean, that was during the middle of a pandemic going on. And I think the numbers were 156,000 people that became unemployed because of the economic stance. But we're going to get on to those eventually. We're going to get talk about that eventually, so let's go and take a look at the article, and you know, instead of talking. Ian Blackford has put on the spot over the S&P's law and the widespread job losses across Scotland's additional, uh, sorry, Scotland's aviation and tourism industry after the position of the quarantine policy. We know that fucked everything up. Ian Blackford was challenged over the S&P's law and the job losses of Scottish tourism and aviation industries have suffered because of the quarantine requirements Scottish Government has imposed. The BBC Today presenter Michelle Hazin, sorry if I say that wrong, um, questioned the delay in enforcing a new law uh, despite the narrative impact suffered in key sectors already facing huge threats because of the, co the COVID pandemic. Ms Huzan said, in the words of the boss of Aberdeen International Airport, you've got a policy that doesn't even enforce and that's played a law in thousands of jobs being lost in aviation tourism. Yes, that is very true. They have a policy. I haven't looked into this policy because it just looks really stupid. I didn't quite believe it exists. 
but the news covered it quite well in their own way that some people were quarantined but other people weren't quarantined but then they weren't wanting flights to go other ways and they were like they were doing things completely different in England it was fucking stupid I don't even want to know but that's we'll talk about it in another time what's the point of having a quarantine policy if it isn't enforced yeah that is also true what is the fucking point of having a policy if you're not going to enforce it or if you're going to let the police enforce it? I have no idea. I'm sure you can see why Peter Boot looking at this in the light, uh, light of the way Nicholas Sturgeon has called the quarantine plan to wait out of it. The air bridge is sim shambolic. You You've had this policy that hasn't been enforced and has Scotland damaged the business in Scotland. Yes, because the aviation industry in Scotland has suffered massively. And the tourism industry is probably the fourth biggest thing that gives Scotland's economy money. Because tourists love Scotland. Why? I don't know. If you look up st Scotland for tourism, it's everywhere on YouTube. There's quite a lot of funny videos to look at from our point of view and well funny enough the airway system isn't actually that bad of an idea you know where the UK actually announced uh, I think it's actually going to say here it, it does uh, where the UK said it would have certain airways where like UK to Greece or UK to France or saying these specific spots were okay so we can start the aviation business back up. This is probably why the aviation is better doing in England than it is up here. Mr. Blackford, we'll talk about him. Uh, Mr. Blackford, the s &P leader in Scotland, in <coughs> inside of the Scottish government was focused on ensuring the Scottish economy would be able to recover from a crisis pandemic cause. He also cited the daily implementing the quarantine measures was a result of decisions with the other nations to agree the mode um modulation of the understanding yeah that doesn't make sense because they all agreed at the same time that they wanted to shut down the quarantine right and then they nick the Scottish government decides to say no, we're not going to lock down at the same time as you guys, which is basically fucked up the economy, like massively, because now you have England benefiting more than Scotland is. Not a good position to put it in, and it's been called out many, many times. Here is when the Tories actually started calling them out for it, when they did call them out for a few other things, but they called them out for the most for this. You should watch this, it's quite good. Absolutely vital in this whole process. And the public need to be informed as to why these choices are being made. And we need to be clear, as I stated earlier, that the while lockdown is saving lives for some, it is costing the lives of others. The long-term consequences could be horrendous from extending lockdown any longer than is absolutely necessary. And for that reason, we need full transparency on the choices that have been made. Chief Executive Stephen Leckie told us, what is gut-wrenching is the thought of losing that and customers leaving Scotland and going to other countries. England and Ireland are ahead of us. We need to put the message out right now that Scotland is open for tourists. Does the First Minister not see that leaving all this to a possible reopening on July the 15th is too little too late? Does she not understand the need to act more quickly on the two-metre question? And will she at least consider acting more proactively so we can save Scottish jobs? What is it that we need to get that R number two that will allow Scotland to gradually emerge from the restrictions that are in place at present as well? And it's important as we move forward, if we want to get the greatest cross-party political support, that we have as much understanding of the facts as possible so that we can understand what the right strategy for Scotland as we emerge from this will be. We know there's no vaccine in the immediate prospect. We're all going to have to live with this for quite some time. Scotland too, just as other nations, just as England is, will eventually start to relax some of these restrictions. And we all need to understand exactly the basis on which those decisions are being made.
Gavin speaks about the real world. Let's look at the real world in Scotland where the SNP are in power. We've got bridges that people can't get across. We've got hospitals that they can't open. We've got an education system failing. This is a record that the Scottish Government and the SNP will have to go to the people to in a little over 15 months' time. And I look forward to that election. They called out, but they didn't listen. Anyway, back to the thing. Mr. Blackford said, I don't think it was the cause of doing damage to Scotland. <laughs> okay. We want to make sure businesses can flourish. We want to make sure the economy comes out of this. Yeah. And there's like the ports before you started letting the bar beer gardens open, saying the economy might not even recover to the year 2023 at the most in Scotland. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That was actually official. That. Uh, we want to make sure the economy comes out flush. Uh, sorry, we want to make sure the economy comes out of this. We want to make sure this plan that the economy can recover, but we can also deal with the issue of inequality. Fucking hell! Really? Nah. Let's not care about the people in Scotland, but let's care about inequality. I forgot Scotland was an SJW fucking paradise. Yep. I, I hope people wake up to this. I mean, I think a few people have woken up, but you're going to put the ideas of equality in SJW matters above Scotland? Come on. Jesus. The quarantine policy is something that has been fought across the United Kingdom. It has led to the border force that needed situation that the Scottish Government has access to the data. But you still fuck it up though, don't you? It's taken some time to do that, but now, now it's in place, as you said yourself. Checks on those that are coming into the country are now becoming uh, taking place because we had to... Memorandum of the understanding across different governments. It's been taking a while to do that. Well, that makes a little bit of no sense because if you want to break up and become your European Union that you want to be, uh, join up, you're going to have to force to build a border. There's going to, if you're going to be this through in, uh, like bring anyone in and be part of the freedom of movement again. You're going to have to make sure there's a border between England. Right. Of course, we, we know there's a lot of things that's wrong with the independent Scotland idea itself. And this video is going to last way longer than it should have been. The, Sco the Scottish Government has faced backlash over the past few weeks of driveling over the adoption of air bridges to kickstart the aviation business back into the action of after the lockdowns, I think the word devilling is a bit of an understatement. It's a lack of um, the Scottish government wanted to lose its power. It's power hungry. It's got what it's wanted. It doesn't want to become a devolved government like it was before. It doesn't want to react the way it was. It's got its power and it doesn't want to lose it. And we will see very shortly this is not a good idea for the future of Scotland. Anyway, England announced a list of over 30 countries on which the quarantine requirements will no longer apply to on 10th of July. Yeah, we know that. Uh, move, the move was designed by a bit to attract tourists to come back to the UK. The outbreak, um, sorry, following the outbreak of the coronavirus, officials said Glasgow, Edinburgh, Aberdeen have urged Nicola Sturgeon to provide clarity as soon as possible, warning delay as early cost the industry jobs yes and she has not fucking helped with that at all and she says i want to do it as soon as possible soon as possible but i kind of figured out how to make my own policies work anyway the representatives instead targeted risk-based approach such as a adoption of airway bridges would allow them to safely establish routes and stop loss of further jobs which would probably be a it's not the situation if you just acted sooner. But they can't do anything when they have a policy they can't really react to. It's quite devastating, to be honest. Nicholas Sturgeon bland the statue of air bridges is shambolic. Cleaning the list of British government had lacked Scotland to sign up and had been changed without 
consulting her. Yeah, it's always England's fault. It's always England's fault somehow. She said, when so much is at stake and is a light weaken, we can't allow ourselves to be dragged along in the wake of it. Quite a flank about her other government's shambolic decisions process. She said, we want to welcome visitors again around the world. So, and we also want to allow our own citizens to travel. <laughs> sure, sure. But stick that, except the ones doing it, the, the county lines to England. Just accept them. Yeah, everyone else can go f flee bound wherever they want. But no, not 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 them. Okay, uh, we want welcome them. We also we also want, if possible, to uh, for practical reasons to have a alignment with ourselves and the these matters with the rest of the UK. Yeah, so that makes no sense at all because this isn't going to help you guys in the future any further because it's it's not helping. And all these stupid decisions you're doing is causing the S&P to possibly dissolve itself. There was even this amazing title I read, which happened on the 7th of July, which I think I'm just going to talk to separately, because it's funny itself. S&P calls the Nicholas Surgeon the design of a bid, uh, bid there out of her death, which she is, because a lot of people are starting to maybe wake up to realise how bad things have gotten, because... There's actually been quite a lot of bad fucking articles that came up against the government. But during this whole thing, this could actually possibly destroy the SNP party itself. With this other express article that says, Nicola Sturgeon Fury, Bluetooth warning for the first minister's bid to join the EU will kill the SNP. Because the entirety of the idea of the SNP to join the European Union... Is that all they have? Like, it's all they have. It's all they all talk about. It's all they shut up about. But the thing is, they talk about independence, but then they want to join a union. That's not how independent countries work. Why do I have to explain this to you? But, let's continue with the article, because I think we're on the 15 minute mark or something. But if you guys want to hear, keep going. Um, Nicholas Sturgeon has been sparked huge debate across the UK with her plans Scotland in the EU independent country. But no, but one expert warned this could lead to the disaster of the SNP. <laughs> I think it could last a little fucking more stuff. But the SNP shambolic destruction would be a good idea um, in my book. Uh, the SNP led by Nicholas Sturgeon has... They ignited the debate about Scottish independence. No, they, they, they've they never shut the fuck up about it since 2014. It's a fucking annoying thing to listen to for... How many years? Six, seven fucking years I've been listening to this stuff. And this is just the news talking about it. Never accept defeat. This is what they did anyway. Um... Uh, Scottish independence, which uh, defeated in 2014, we know that, but the UK voted to leave the EU in 2016, despite most of Scotland voting in the main. Don't use that as an argument. We vote as a country, not as a independent state. Um, Ms Sturgeon believes that the mandate to take Scotland in the EU visa independent must, has led the debate surrounding the, the east with which Scotland could join the bloc and the economic repercussions of it. Depends. And Tim was was all uh, senior follower Adam Smith Institute um, urged in this article for Forbes in 2016 that the issue could hurt the S&P. Yeah, if you have this agenda going, I don't think I'd explain it. I think this guy would be enough for me. He claimed that there's no easy way of Scotland to get in. It cannot slide through the now, slide through by saying it was already in, those should be an easy time for anything. He added, this is means that the Scottish Scotland will need to have this, that second referendum. Yeah, it would. It would only mean they would have to get in. 
But the thing is, there's been reports about Angela Merkel, the German minister, saying um, they didn't actually want Scotland in because they were actually a bit feared of them because they could actually fuck up their own economy because they, I think they would be like Romania of the other side of the country. Like, we know all the eastern, uh, is it the eastern, uh, yeah, the eastern uh, countries are the poorer ones of the European Union. And Scotland would be just a tip. <laughs> it would be, it'd be like the other side of it. And it's like the two extremes. And then the central powers in the middle kind of thing. Because that's what would happen. But there's like so many things wrong with Scotland that they don't even have the liability to get independent Scotland. But there you go. But if they get their second independence, you have to wait 20 fucking years for that anyway. But they're still in power, so they can probably do a few things. And I think... And I think I think speak for many not if uh, sorry if not most English then I say if they want to leave well goodbye and good luck oh don't do that um also they are going to need all that good luck for the next stage would obviously be to join the European Union as well as they say they want to unless Angela Merkel and uh, you know those top elites don't say anything because I think they still don't want Scotland in it. But they, they, there's some articles I would say otherwise, but I don't want us to be in. If if I have to be told my country, Scotland, is going to be joining the European Union, I'm going to move to London. <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll go somewhere else. Even if the missus says, uh, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, I'm going to join American Trump. See how Kanye West presidency is going to fucking go. <laughs> I don't know. But I'm definitely not going to see for this shit show. If I can save it, that is. If I, we can save it. And we can figure out a way of saving it at the end of this video. Uh, he said the perspective Scotland could instigate easily, but would be so seamless to economic perspective, sorry. Um, he continued, in order to join the EU, you'd have to go to have a budget deficit of 3% of GDP, or less you'd be... Obviously, which allows to for some fudging moving into moving in that direction, which is true, and that's not obviously the state for Scotland because I think we're way higher than we should be to join them anyway. Plus, we need our own currency. We don't have our own currency, and people would say, "Oh, you've got the pound sterling. That's a UK currency." And don't say because you got the city means you got the fucking coin too. No, you need your own currency. Unless you join the euro. That's not going to happen. But there's a few other things along with that. And Scotland, now as the oil has plummeted. Yes, that's a thing they seem to forget. The oil industry is in shatters right now. It's actually probably worse than it ever been. All the oil's there. It's just not getting touched because the, it's absolutely worthless. Simply is not there. It's difficult given to intertwining the British and Scottish accounts would get exactly like but yes yeah, statements have the Scottish loan budget deficit hit eight to ten percent of GDP. <laughs> it's not even fucking close to three. Oh my god. At the point the EU won't let Scotland in, unless Angela Merkel says otherwise, probably not. Uh let the Scottish in, not unless they do something financial construction accounting to the good 5% or so of GDP and that's why the S&P don't actually want that that they're claiming they want the independence and the EU entry because imposing that would short of austerity on their own nation then they are obviously in charge and the sponsor and would kill them as a political party because we know every time the Scottish government has done something they have never worked ever it's never worked and it's it's quite incredible i mean every time they do something it just doesn't work and imagine them trying to run scotland i mean we know how bad they took the coronavirus pandemic that's just wow however there's some experts disagree plus oh well that's this is brussels so brussels expert anthony some more wrote the report published by the year claimed that Scotland could join within the five-year period, becoming an independent country. It explained Scotland was previously part of the European Union for nearly five decades. No, 
Scotland was never separate. It was part of the UK. I think you need to check your history. The UK and Scotland are in the same thing. Do I have to explain that to you? But maybe you're just an EU that doesn't understand your own nation going fucking shit. But on that basis alone, Scottish economy is man manifestly capable of forming a part of the union economy, responding efficiently to its associated demands and force. The, pub the public will therefore the extremely strong position to satisfy the, con the criteria of the Copenhagen criteria, but this also adds any membership to the EU is likely to spark a border between Scotland and England. Miss, Mr. Samoa says it would be unfortunate, but also claims it would be manageable. Okay, yeah, sure. It'd be manageable. Did, did you say you guys going to manage to build a border across Ireland, Northern Ireland? You guys said you were going to manage that one fine, but everyone seemed to forgot how that fucking line went, dude. Because it never got mentioned ever again. But there would have to be a border between England and Scotland because, one, the border is designed to keep people out from another country to another. This is why there's a Trump wall. This is why nobody liked it. But the thing is that it was such an issue with immigration, that's why it got proposed and that's why it went through. That's why it's kind of getting built. But for Scotland to do it, if it was going to join the European Union, that means join the freedom of movement. It would actually cause the fact of building a border necessary against the UK and Scotland. But this maybe just shows you how pathetic the SNP are as a party. But maybe this video is just too long for you to get to this part of the video. But it's quite extraordinary to show how pathetic they are. And... There's a lot of people that's kind of realizing it now, how bad Scotland's gone. And if you saw how bad they've dealt the coronavirus pandemic, I don't want to go over that again, but we can easily go over that because the unemployment rate, the job losses, the economy's fucked, everything's going downhill in Scotland. It can't be led to England, it can't be blamed to them because the entirety of power is in Scotland. Scotland's got this power grab right now, and if you want sole responsibility of things going wrong, you have England not to blame for this one, because Scotland is in charge. And this is them where they're part of the UK. Imagine what's going to happen when they're not part of the UK. Fucking hell. But then again, maybe I'm just racist. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video to the very end. That means I'm excellent for this channel. I mean, if you want to support this channel even further, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe this video or the channel in any other sort of way. And if you want to support this channel even further than that, which would be appreciated anyway, please be sure to click any links below for alternative means where we can get more content out to you guys. And the number, hail the empire.